We're going to keep letting folks in um, for just a few more minutes and then we'll get started. Constance and Jim and Rebecca and Mirabai and Wow. You loop a co-housing in the house. Co-housing? We just had a horrendous budget meeting, so I'm looking forward to a fun meeting with you guys. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Constance. Great. So is this happening in Colorado or someplace? Or? Our, um, the, our original meeting owner is in Boulder, Ellen. Oh. Ellen Ohashi, thank you very much for setting all this up. So this is a local meeting then? No. No. I'm, I'm in Boston. I'm in Worcester, Mass. 24 people on this. Wow. Yeah. I'm in Vermont. Yeah. yeah. So I'm trying to find. Why is it? Jan, where did you say you're from? Uh, Fair Oaks, California, outside Sacramento. Excellent. Catherine, where did you say you were from? Uh, Charlotte, Vermont. Excellent. Uh, I'm from Anchorage, Alaska. Wowee. And you have the best name ever still. Mimsy. I love that name. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. I'm gonna excellent, you. excellent. All right. Um, Welcome, Rebecca. Glad we're all here. <laughs> oh, Beth. Yes, hi, you guys. I, I am, um, I'm trying to get on on my laptop and it says I'm I need to wait for the uh, to be allowed in. So I don't know if somebody can you see me, uh, Lori? Are you the um, administrator here? I'm not, but Bill mm -hmm. McCart, who oh, is the true. administrator, is looking into that right now. I can see it on his face. Okay, great, great. If not, I'll, <laughs> if it doesn't work, I can be here. But all right, well, it should be fine now. Thanks, Bill. Several people have put where they're from in the chat. That's a great thing. So we we're not going to do introductions. So. Put something in the chat about where, what community you're here from. Raise my hand. That's a great idea. Thank you. So, Lori Lynn is. Um... <laughs> what is Lori Lynn? Lori Lynn is. <laughs> this is Mary Beth. I just um, wanted to say that I invited a fellow co houser to join me, Annie Tucker. And, um, She's here today because she's got a lot of experience <laughs> and uh, uh, was unable to open to join the open discussion a couple oh, weeks great. ago. So. Great. Well, we're so glad you're here. All right. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Well, I am going to get this party started. Hi, Kai. We're happy you're here. Um, and uh, welcome all of you. Thank you so much. Thir 34 folks strong from all over the U.S. That makes... Um, that makes my heart happy. I'm so grateful that we're all here. Um, and um, I want to ask um, a couple of things. Um, one is, um, Bill, do you want to talk out the gate about how we're going to use the chat and all of that? Or are, are you ready for that? Or are you doing other stuff? Sure, sure. Hi, everyone. I'm Bill McCart. I'm an old friend of Dara's. And um, so she asked me if I could help out by running the Zoom, Zoom for this, this meeting today. So um, I have a sense that most of you are fairly experienced Zoom users, so I won't go into any of the details about that. Um, we're going to have a breakout. We're going to have breakout groups um, later on, but I'll go into the instructions for that at that, that time. Um, there is a chat. You're welcome to use chat. Somebody will be, one of the, the team here will be monitoring that. Um, it's a small group, so there might be a delay, uh, but we'll try to answer any questions that you, that you have, uh, that you submit via chat. Um, if you have technical trouble on your side, you can chat to me, uh, and I'll see if I can help you. Um, so I think those are, those are the basics. Is there anything else? Any, any questions? Ah, <laughs> hmm? I, I was, I was, I was, uh, going, no, don't ask questions about zoom. Um, <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, yeah. Thank you very much, Bill. We're grateful that you're here to help out with our technology, um, pieces. Um, I also want to acknowledge, um, Alan 
and Liz, Dara, and Annie Lehman, who's not here, um, for helping develop our agenda and putting together everything that we're going to experience in the next hour and a half. It's been really fun working with um, folks from all over the place to um, put together this information for you all or to put together this experience for you. Um, so um, I uh, want to let you know that the, what goes into the chat um, uh, will be recorded. Um, Annie, that I mentioned earlier from the National Co-Housing Association um, has offered to take that document that is made from the chat and to put it into a, probably a Google Doc for us that has all the resources that'll get listed in there and all that stuff. So um, if um, we did a great job at the last um, the last gathering that we had of when somebody said, oh, check out this resource, somebody put it in the chat. So thanks for doing that. Um, and let's keep that up because we can use that as a resource down the road. Um, also, if you're not already on the um, uh, co-housers for racial justice email list uh, and you want to be uh, go ahead and throw your email in the chat as well and we'll make sure that we get you on that email list and and keep you informed um, through that as well as through the Facebook group of what's going on um, so um, oh, I just kind of want to take a breath for myself because it's exciting to have all of you here and settle into um, our meeting objectives um, so um, there's there's three things that we're that we're here to achieve today. Um, the first is to create welcoming, brave space for addressing racism in our communities and in our lives. Um, the second is to explore these three major questions. Um, one is, and these what these are the themes of our breakout groups later. Um, one is how can co-housing communities individually and collectively engage in and support existing movements led by people of color? And Bill, this might be a good time to actually, people can read this, it's on the agenda. So if mm -hmm. you wanna share the agenda, um, those who are visual learners like me um, would probably appreciate seeing this. Um, the second is how can co-housers do our ongoing racial justice work within ourselves and within our communities? Um, and the third question is, how can co-housing communities integrate racial justice into our higher purpose and daily lives? Um, and then our final um, meeting objective, we're in that very first section here, is to determine action items and next steps. So that part is really important for us to not just sit and talk about things, but also translate that into doable actions. So we'll talk more about how we're going to do that later. Um, in the meantime, um, as, as good co-housers, um, <laughs> we um, also want to look at sort of the agreements for how we're going to um, run with the meeting. So um, if, Bill, you want to switch over to the terms of engagement, I sent it by email um, mm -hmm. to you. We can do that, and I can tell you that um, this is a document that um, comes from an important teacher in my life. Her name is Athia Walking Tree. Um, she's a Jamaican elder and teacher. She's a drum maestra and a healer, um, and you can learn more about her at afiawalkingtree.com if you'd like to. Um, and I'm actually going to read all of this. Sorry, it's important though. Um, and I love that it's in this, I, the, the first person. So I'm, I'm speaking for myself and asking all of you to speak this into, into, into your own being as well. So my vision of creating a world of connection begins here. In all my affairs, within this circle, my community, my home, our work, and the world, I endeavor to utilize and prioritize undefended communication and heart-centered leaderful practices. In this way, I continue my practice towards transformational love in action within the circle and within the global circle. And then here's how I do that. I use I statements. I speak from my own experience and refrain from generalizing or using we statements. I embrace discomfort. Discomfort is required for growth and learning. Uh, privilege of whatever kind conditions me to expect comfort and to conflate comfort with safety. I'm here to create and support brave space. It's okay for me to make mistakes and be vulnerable. I consider both and instead of either or. I let go of binary thinking. 
I approach with curiosity rather than certainty and assume we all have something to learn from each other. I listen carefully to others. I ask questions to clarify intent and meaning. As I listen, I notice the impact of statements on my mind and body and on others in the space. I refrain from assumptions about others' lived experiences or identities. I seek understanding of others' experiences and ideas, and I acknowledge that full understanding might not be possible. I take space and I make space. I pay attention to patterns of participation and how they relate to broader patterns of privilege and oppression in our society. Why does that make me want to cry? Oof. I'm aware that of the voices that may not be heard if I'm a person who talks a lot. I challenge myself to speak up if I don't talk a lot. I expect and accept a lack of closure. I plan to leave with more questions and answers as well as with more tools and understandings. I'm mindful of and understand the difference between intent and impact. I commit to assume good intentions of others while I also commit to being accountable for my own impact. Direct feedback is a gift. What's learned here leaves here. What's said here stays here. It's okay to share the lessons I learn collectively with others outside of this group. It's not okay to gossip or share personal remarks attached to names. If I think something needs to be addressed, I will go to the source. I take care of myself so I can stay present. Putting aside my own needs does not serve our greater purpose. So go to the bathroom if you need to. Get some water. I cultivate praxis. I reflect, take action, reflect, and act again. I explore vulnerability as a, a resource of strength and insight to face shame, blame, denial, and blind spots in myself and in community concerns. And here's a special note on facilitators. Facilitators are not experts. Facilitators create spaces to support all of our growth and learning. They're not done learning. Responsible, uh, facilitators are responsible for keeping us on track and everyone brings knowledge. So thank you for walking through that. And I encourage you, uh, I encourage you, oh, hang on just a second. Um, I encourage you to um, consider taking one of these and making this your mission for this meeting for the next hour and 15 minutes that we're together. Take one of these that challenges you. Um, okay, and then somebody had a question. Are you going to send that to us? Or? Um, I can, yes. Um, and I saw somebody ask if we could get it in the chat. Um, and I can copy it into the chat when it's done, when I'm done talking. <laughs> um, if we want it there. So um, I actually am done talking. So I'm going to hand it over to Dara um, to talk to us um, a little bit more about our own, our own stuff. So, um, oh, and also going to ask, in, in case we're not doing it, I'm not looking right now, but um, if, if we're not speaking, let's go ahead and mute ourselves so that the background noise doesn't, doesn't get in the way. I'll mute right. everybody. Hey, thanks. You're the best. Great. Welcome. So we've already started with quite a bit of information. Thank you, Laurie Lynn, for that concise and, and guide. I want to take a couple minutes just to check in with ourselves. So checking in with how you're doing in your body just now. How does it feel? Coming. What motivated you for coming to this meeting, nobody came here without a strong motivation. What's bringing you here? Just giving that a few breaths. Feeling your body, maybe there's some emotion. There may be some thoughts. Just taking a minute to welcome that and notice what's here for you. And then as you take a minute with yourself, when you feel ready, just 
just taking a moment to shift your attention to the group. And if you can look at gallery view, if you're not already, just notice who else is here. Just take us in for a minute and notice that none of us is here alone. What's motivating all of us? Maybe differences. There may be some guiding principles. Just making a space for that. Okay. And with that, let's bring that with us into our day here and our time together. Lori Lynn, back to you. Thank you, Dara. And I'm going to uh, ping it right on over to Liz um, so that we can um, kind of take, take stock of where we've already been. Uh, Liz, are you ready to, ready to go? Yeah. Great. So we've settled in ourselves and seen that we are here together. And we all come from, um, from community. We're all part of community and so what we're looking for here before we get started with what to do next is to acknowledge what we've done so far and there's a bunch of us so i'm hoping that you can put this in the chat what is your community doing now what has your community already done what is your history um, with working on issues of race and racism and white supremacy what what have you done um, in, the, in the past? If you can write these things in the chat, then we can lift those up. We need to acknowledge uh, the work that we've done. Is there anyone who has stuff to write about your existing work in your community on um, white supremacy, on race, on racial justice. So we have a book group on white fragility that has happened. Um, a community that has only done stuff based on individual action, but not had community action. You could list some of those individual actions that you've done. Um, a standing book club, an anti-racist task force at one community, a discussion and work group on white supremacy and me, um, a group is working with white awake. There's a group having weekly Zoom gatherings. Visibility efforts at a busy road nearby and attending protests together. There's discussion groups, a film group. I hope other people will list if you've done films. This one group has watched 13th. A monthly anti-racist Black Lives Matter and diversity awareness group. Um, hosts of organizations. So um, many of you are familiar with uh, Surge. Somebody remind me what that stands for. Showing up for Showing racial up. justice. I never get the first <laughs> word right, and then I can't get the rest. Showing up for racial justice. Um, open conversation, including some people, some African-American people. Um, having conversations with white friends, with church members, more for social, showing up for racial justice. Floundering. I think that might be something that many of us have in common. <laughs> floundering. My, certainly, speaking for myself, my community is very good at floundering. Um, a book group with white fragility. Oh, people are working on the 1619 Project. Putting together a list of black businesses. So keep posting those things. I'm going to pass over um, the discussion for this time to Alan um, to move on. But 
Today's work is to be, um, to set in that foundation. In other words, we're gonna acknowledge what we've done so far, but today's discussion is what do we do next? What more do we do? Um, but, but thank yourself for the work that you have done in your community and for your presence here today to find new ways to work in community. Alan. I really, really appreciate everyone uh, being here. Um, I happen to be on the Co-Housing Association uh, National Board of Directors and uh, happen to be the president of the association. And uh, 2021 is the 30th anniversary of the formation of the Co-Housing Association of the United States. And how great would it be for the national higher purpose to be something about racial justice. And we're, you know, we're an organization that consists of 170 communities in 33 states and 150 communities in formation. And I estimate that to be around 30, 40,000 people. So what if 170 communities, 150 forming communities, and 30,000 people got organized around some national topic. And uh, I know I'm reading in the list here about uh, people doing individual actions and some communities doing uh, you know, some awareness actions. But what if everybody here who represents a different community becomes the community organizer of your, of your co-housing uh, neighbors and we coalesce around actions, uh, topics, and spread co-housing into the wider world. You know, co-housers, just by definition, are, you know, in theory, emulate what we're trying to get across to the, to the, rest, of, the rest of the world. We're, we're consensus-based, we're not win by one, we're collaborative, we're not uh, rugged individualists in I can do it myself. We tend to work together. We're, 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 we're accepting of people, not because of assimilation, but, but because of who they are. So we're kind of the square pegs in the American way round hole. And so how, what is it that we can do as co-housers? I know this is the hardest part because we had pounded in our heads, you know, winning is better than losing, bigger is better than smaller. Uh, more is, is better than less. That's been pounded into us ever since we popped out of the womb. And co-housers, for whatever reason, have decided to flip that, flip that paradigm over. And, and, and we really have the ability to change the American way to be a redefined American way, a more collaborative American way, a more diverse American way. And so I think the purpose, this is that, you know, I was, I've been on the, I've, there's never been a, brown skin person who's been in my position in the co-housing association. And so I, I, since I joined the board during, after, right after the conference that was in Durham, North Carolina here four or five years ago, there was a very rich discussion that was held just similar to the one that we had last week um, around race and ethnicity. And there was the same kind of rah-rah, everyone was excited about it kind of fervor. And uh, what happened? Well, you know, everyone got back to their daily lives. Everyone started having their own issues they had to deal with, and it pretty much fell off the line. Unfortunately, it took a, a black guy getting murdered in Minneapolis for us to get to this point that we are today. And I'm really hopeful that we can figure out how we can become a sustainable movement. Because oftentimes what happens is, is that diversity and cultural competency, be, uh, because I do that training, I do, I've been doing that work for 25 years. And and it ends up being kind of an add-on. So let's have a, let's hire, let's, let, for our retreat this year, let's hire a, a, a diversity trainer to come in and fork out a couple thousand to them and, and uh, they can, you know, tell us, uh, tell us about diversity. And, uh, and so it ends up just being all, this add-on thing. And then it goes away and we all forget about it and we're on to the next retreat that's next time. And maybe it's about some other topic about, you know, Arguing, how do we resolve arguing over the color of paint we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna make our garages or whatever it is, and so I'm hoping that this group will be something other than adding diversity and cultural competency on just as sort of a oh yeah we need to talk about this or oh yeah this is an important topic because it's in the newspaper, 
And so what we're what in my breakout group, uh, I'm I'm hoping that we can talk about how we can make that personal change happen in the day-to-day -day lives, how we run our communities, how those day-to-day -day, uh, decision making processes that we use um, to decide the, the outcomes of our of our uh, of our day-to-day -day lives in our communities. And then how can we translate that and into the wider world, be it around affordable housing, be it around justice reform in the police departments. I'm hoping that 170 communities will be able to come up with some national topic, maybe around affordable housing since we live in housing. And that's listed as oftentimes as one of the uh, biggest risk factors for uh, discrimination. I read that in Minneapolis, uh, black people own houses at a rate like 50% less than that of white people. So if it's in Minneapolis, which is a pretty progressive part of the country, I can only imagine what that's like in a place like any place else. I think I went over my five minutes, but uh, um, I, you know, I think this, this is some, this is just kind of, I've been living this for my entire life. And now there's, this, I have this opportunity to help be a part of something that could actually make an impact in, in, uh, in this issue that I've had to deal with on a day-to-day -day basis since I was born. Well, thank you, Alan, for uh, taking on this important issue of sustainability as we were planning this, this conversation and this experience. Uh, it became really clear to us that um, we don't want to be just a flash in the pan kind of movement. You know, r racism has been around for 400 years and our now attention to it um, as a society um, doesn't, it, 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 it must be ongoing and lasting, which requires us to make um, ongoing and lasting changes in how we as individuals function, how we as communities function, um, and to, to acknowledge that um, the, the, the one-off events that we're doing are important and meaningful, and that, that there's got to be more in order to completely dismantle and interrupt racism and stop it. So um, I, I'm grateful for, to Alan for bringing that part to the table and grateful to the folks who are going to participate in that um, breakout group to talk about how do we do this in our communities. Um, so um, that's where we're headed next to the bulk of what we're here to meet about, um, to talk about and, and to get into these um, three groups and um, start our, our work together. Um, so Dara and or Bill, are you ready to sort of set us up? I think Dara first, if you can kind of give us the overview of, of what the experiences we're about to have. And then Bill, if you can come in and give us the technology behind it, I think that would, that would help. Yes. yes. So ready to roll up our sleeves. Uh, I want to first start by saying, unfortunately, you can't choose which group you're going to go to due to a Zoom structural thing today. So you're, everybody's going to be brought into one of three groups and you're in the mystery until you show up in your group. We, none of us know where we're going to be except the facilitators. So we do have three basic groups. And I, and I want to say that these are broad and deep topics. So if you feel as you come into a group, wow, I wish I would have been in the other group because I have so much experience or, or passion for that. Let's include that, but also stay present to where you got put today, because there may be some beautiful gem in that. And, and looking at what our preferences are and our discomforts are, is part of our work. So that said, we're gonna spend about 25 minutes rolling up our sleeves and, and just being together around certain questions and themes. So I invite you to just try it on, bring your, your piece from our terms of engagement, what you might be working on, might, might be a lens that you can try anew, bring it into your group. Um, so each group, I want to ask that each group has, in the beginning, in the first minute, just name one or two scribes. So each, each group needs one or two people that are willing to take notes and be a reporter on what's basically happening in the group. 
and be able to capture some information that we'll use later. So that will serve our entire group. Uh, really important role and not to rest it on just one person. It'd be great to have a team if possible, because you'll, you'll each see something slightly different and that will serve. So the first group is how can co-housing communities individually and collectively engage in and support existing movements led by people of color? That group is gonna be led by Lori Lynn. The second group is how can co-housers do our ongoing racial justice work within ourselves and our communities? The internal work. That group is gonna be led by Liz. The third group, how can co-housing communities integrate racial justice into our higher purpose and daily lives? That group will be led by Alan. So um, any questions you can also bring to your facilitator if needed or speak into the chat. If you have some issue around the technology, go to Bill. Um, looking forward to your experience and then what we can harvest from that. We'll, we'll come back to the whole group afterward. So Bill, do you feel ready for the breakouts? Yes, just to let everybody know, if you haven't been in a breakout group before, the first thing you'll see is a message on your screen um, inviting you into a group. You just click that button and then you'll go into the group. Um, people will come in over the next several seconds and then you'll be in the group together uh, for the next 25 minutes. About five minutes in, I will send a message letting you know that you have about five more minutes. And then at the final minute, there'll be a message that comes onto the screen with a countdown that you have one minute left. Um, if you have technical difficulty, there is a button that you can press somewhere in there and I'll try to help you out. And uh, you can return to the main room at any time if, if you do that accidentally or if you get kicked out. Uh, I'll notice that and I'll try to put you back in, in the group. Just remember which group you came from. <laughs> okay, all right, if we're all ready, here we go. Thank you, Bill and Dara. Joel, where in Washington is Winslow? Bainbridge Island. We are just across the Puget Sound from Seattle. I've heard of you. Yeah, that's great. Yeah, yeah it's, it's been a pretty good place to land. We, my family's lived here. My husband, two kids, and I have lived here for, God, 11 years now. So, wow. yeah. Yeah, it's, it's yeah. been quite the experience. Hi, everybody. Welcome back. <clears throat> Hello. Happy to see all of your faces in one space again. Um, uh, Liz, I think this is your, your moment right here. This is my moment. <laughs> I, I, I want to update people on the timing of this meeting, which is that we were supposed to be done with report out by 1.35. Um, so I'm going to ask um, again for, for the reporters to put your notes in the chat. Um, so that we can hear the report from each of the three sessions. So we had a reporter in each session. If you can write in the chat how your discussion went in terms of what idea has resonance, a primary next step to continue, and what did you struggle with most in your conversation? And since we sort of didn't didn't line people up in the beginning to answer those questions um and i know in my group we didn't necessarily get ah. right there um it, it, it's it's okay whatever you got um, yeah something that happened in your in your small group that was valuable to you something that you're taking with you thank you for that your name doesn't show now laura lee 
Lori. G. Lori. Oh. It's Lori Lynn. It's okay. Lynn. <laughs> it turns out that um, I shared my link with my whole community. So there's like 400 Lori Lynn Hogan's on this call. And then there was some technological difficulties. So you just call me LL. <laughs> <laughs> so the question is in your discussion, um, in your small group, please, uh, what would be a summary of what you heard or one thing that you're taking with you that you can, um, that you can put there, that you can take with you in this gathering? What is one thing that you heard in your small group that will help you for working on race and racism in your co-housing community and with the neighborhood and with the world? And one summary is, I think we need to have a few more conversations unpacking all of this. Yes, more than one. Absolutely. So showing up for racial justice came as a great uh, resource for, um, for being involved in the world and getting leadership from people of color. Justice in June t PDF, um, go to where people of color are and listen um, as a great strategy. Go with a buddy, call in advance. Someone has written be brave, which is very important. Um, I don't know what, oh, more reasons in the oatmeal. I started to say, I don't know what that means, but I do know what that means. Um, engaging conversations with your, within your community. That's getting people to talk to each other, people who already know each other, to talk to each other about race and racism. Challenge racism when you hear it. Listen to the experiences of by indigenous and other people of color. Cultivate reading groups. Uh, rent space. Um, the Justice in June is there in the chat if you'd like to link to that. I learned a person can learn from biases from other life experiences, not just in the home environment. Yes. And um, it's an idea for an icebreaker to have such a short discussion is an idea to use as an icebreaker. Um, that we have anxiety and fear becoming vulnerable and authentic, that we're afraid of making mistakes, um, and the value of under vulnerability, and then the underlying biases that come with white supremacy culture. That's not what it says there, but, uh, but I'm sure what Dara was talking about. Make donations. So this is a beginning conversation. Each of our groups um, got a little bit into each of our topics and we will continue that. And Alan is gonna talk about getting to the next steps. Am I right that Alan is next? I'm okay, not. well, you know, in our, our group, I was a poor time manager, <laughs> but we had, I think, a, a, a very uh, rich conversation and I'm, sensing that that happened in the other two groups as well and so what i'm hoping is is that we'll agree to continue to have these conversations and maybe the maybe even focus it in a little bit more this was really kind of a shotgun approach to find out uh, uh about a whole bunch of a whole wide ranging uh, sense of things and uh, on another note the uh, co-housing association is planning another simple series uh online conference that's called uh community for all and that's I think on October the 14th or uh, August the 14th and I was able to sort of pull out a section of that of that uh, conference and reserve it for whatever uh, content might come out of the uh, co-housers for racial justice group and so I don't know I'm thinking I'm going to turn this little part of the project over to uh, Lori Lynn and uh, Dara maybe people from your community to kind of come up with what that content might look like um, for the uh, conference. It's like an hour and a half, I think, of, uh, of a presentation, panel presentation, uh, open presentation. And then afterwards, there's gonna be opportunity for kind of an open forum type thing has happened at the, the uh, Heart of Community Conference that happened last Saturday. God, it seems like about three months ago that, that happened. 
but uh, again, I'm just amazed that we hit, you know, the, the Facebook group populated with over 200 people with that over not even a week. We had 50 people show up to this thing and uh, it's just overwhelming to me. And so I'm just trying to, it's, I would, I have, I would like to see focus and I think everyone else in the room would like to see some kind of focus and, and, and some next steps. But I'm not sure if this is, I'm not sure if this is the, the meeting where that, that's going to happen. Maybe Lori Lynn has some idea on how to pull some focus together, or maybe that's something that happens offline and, and maybe the topic of, the, of another conversation. Uh, I do have some ideas. Um, the, the first question is, um, do, I'm, I'm going to switch you all to gallery view so I can see your beautiful faces. Um, just with a, a, a show of hands, um, are, are you interested in gathering like this again? All right, so two screens of some people raising their hands. Okay. Um, so sounds like one of the next steps is for us to meet again. <laughs> so um, then the next question is um, frequency. Um, do you want to, you know, uh, do we have a fire in our belly and we want to go, you know, share that fire with everybody. So we're going to meet again tomorrow or I'm just kidding. I don't really want to meet tomorrow. Um, <laughs> I mean, I do. I like you all, but um, uh do we want to meet? Uh, I think probably the most frequently I can do it is every other week. Do we want to meet once a month, once a quarter? Um, we could meet with each focusing on the three topics. Yes, that's a good idea, Liz. Um, that, so there's that option as well that we could break into subgroups um, and, and structure ourselves. And, and let's be clear, those three topics that we came up with, that was five of us sitting down in a room going, what should we talk about? So it, the, there's another level of this, which is if you want to influence what we talk about, my, my thinking is we figure out sort of the big picture of how we want to go and you're invited, come, come to the table, let's build this together and figure out, are these the three topics we want to focus on together? Um, I see hands raising, hi Val, nice to see you. Um, uh, let's start with Val and then Dara and then Joelle and then Alex, and then I'll look at the second page. Um, thank you. Um, so I guess I, I, there's a lot going on locally and that I, you know, and I was in my mind, I was picturing coming to this as ideas to bring back where I would spend mo most of my energy mm -hmm. um, and, 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 a, and almost like a hub of sharing that with each other. Um, but, but definitely I would love the, I love the, the vision that Alan spoke to around like what could we do as a large community too but it i guess i say all that to say that that every other week feels like a lot for me given that there's a lot going on locally so mm -hmm. those are just my thoughts right now great got it thanks uh dara uh two things one is i really wanted to honor paula and i don't i don't want to like call you out but it's something that you said really is sitting in my heart so I also want to invite you to respond in any way. But when you said, you know, why aren't other black people here? I, I sit with that question too in my, in my experience and in my life at home as well. And in this intentionality and then in the, in the, ch and I don't have the answer. I'm just walking with that question. Right. But I wanted to honor that question. And I saw in the chat, Catherine, Bach, I also don't mean to call you out, but I honor, want to honor what you shared, ideas on black leaderships, le leaderships for groups like ours. Lee C, my black roommate, would like to talk to any of you who are interested in this topic. And when I take those two in, I'm, I want to say, we're just starting here. And, and we don't know who we are yet. This group is a living organism, and I think that the next time we meet, we may all have other people to invite. And I just wanted to make a space for that, 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 we, that this group is forming. And, and we don't know who's here yet, but I want to acknowledge we're at the beginning of something. And we may want to go home and think about who else might want to join us next time, as we're also considering what's our focus going to be. There's, there's several themes, and we may give time for the different themes. All of it's possible. 
Um, can I respond to what you just said? I am I muted? No. Oh. Can you hear me? Okay. Yes. So um, I just like to respond to you. I, I think, um, and this comes from just reading in the chat, Dara responded um, about fear and anxiety, uh, about being vulnerable. And I'm thinking that just as it is, um, I, I don't have any anxiety or fear of being the only black woman here present in this uh, arena or on this um, call. Um, but that's not to say that there are others. And maybe because Blacks have not always felt that they're included, that that is why they probably shy away from joining organizations that when they look at the organization's website, maybe they don't see any people of color in the leadership roles. And so since this is a, a, a new organization just birthing itself and it's still organic, that may be um, people of color, you know, and be, you know, asked to or invited to come to the table to help form um, and share ideas about what what it is we want to do with this co-housing group. Thank you. I think that's a, a powerful idea. Thank I you. I appreciate it. Mm -hmm. I do too. Um, Joelle. Am I saying your name right? I don't have it. In yeah, you are. You got it. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, wow, I'm just I'm just sitting with what uh, Paula was just saying. Um, I I have to I have to say that I I definitely would would hope that um, I'll just speak for myself. I'm going to put put the existence of this group out there to my co-housing group for sure because of course inviting means maybe more people would come um, and. I just didn't do it before this one because who knows? Um, who knows why? Um, but but I think that that wow, there's just so much to say. And I guess the short version is I would like to see this, like Alan was saying, I would like to see this turn into a larger conversation. When I was at the conference last year, um, I think it was actually at the diversity panel. Um, it really became clear that um, that co-housing does have like, like many others, we're not alone um, in this country, um, does have a whiteness problem. I, I don't know if problem is the right word, but, but close enough. Um, and I'd love to see the larger picture conversation about co-housing shift over to what is it about co-housing that makes us not just the affordability piece, because there are plenty of rich people of color, um, you know, obviously economic injustice aside, but but what is it about co-housing that makes it so predominantly white? And what is it that we can change about ourselves and our systems that can improve that? And I think that um, to switch to a more practical topic, um, when you suggested uh, frequency of the meeting, quarterly is obviously right out. I don't, I don't think we're, we gain anything by delay. Um, every other week does sound like a lot. It's very intense. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, this is important and we're taking a moment um, to change a moment into a movement. And I think that momentum definitely is on our side in that case. Got it. Thank you. Um, we've got about eight minutes left before we um, take, take, take leave of one another. Um, I want to respect everyone's time and presence here this morning. Um, and so I, uh, I think what I'm hearing is, um, Monthly sounds right to Constance. Um, oh, big questions. Okay, can't answer those big questions in eight minutes. Um, <laughs> uh, so um, I'm hearing definitely a next meeting. Sounds like some, maybe it's every three weeks. Maybe that's the, maybe that's the rhythm. Um, and the invitation to sit at the table to make decisions about what we talk about is open to everybody here. Um, and everybody here is encouraged to do what Paula suggested, which is to reach out to people of color in your communities and ask them to come sit at the table with us um, and help help lead the conversation. Um, so uh, I'm gonna say, uh, if you're interested in being part of the group that um, builds the agenda 
and sets the just does the work for our next meeting, um, go ahead and um, mention that in the chat. Um, and I'll do the same thing I did last time, which is send an email to our, our group, those of you who gave um, email addresses, although I'm noticing that I don't have the whole chat anymore. Um, so maybe our team can stay afterwards um, to help make sure we collect everything. Um, uh, sorry, random thoughts all happening at once. Uh, so go ahead and let me know in the chat. Thank you, Rebecca. Um, if you're interested in helping build the agenda, I'll send an email out to the list of everybody and I'll put it on our Facebook group that says, we're gonna get together and build the agenda. Please join us if you want to. So um, I'll make sure that that's open and available to everybody. Um, and um, we have six more minutes. Any other thoughts about next steps from here? Um, Lori Lynn? Yes. Is it possible for us as um, members of the Facebook group to invite others to the Facebook group and then they can get some of our postings and be part of these conversations? Or is that only for the administrator of the group to be able to do? Uh, I'm deferring to Alan on this because he's the administrator of the group and I don't, I, it, it's a private group. I don't know if we can invite people. How does it work? Yeah, every, people can invite others. And in fact, there have been a few people who have invited, I don't know, their whole communities to it, <laughs> and which is good. Maybe Lori, Lori Lynn did that. I don't know. But uh, actually, Val and Lori Lynn and myself are the three uh, managers of the group. And so I, I suggested that um, between now and whenever the next meeting is, and if, if what, what I was hearing is that there's lots happening locally that people will keep track of what those actions are, those activities are, even if it's sitting around reading a book, if we could have reports about that and photos of people doing the work, uh, whether it's uh, personal internal work or uh, you know, book clubs or whatever, I think those would be important things to just kind of keep, keep a record and keep people uh, in the know that there is stuff going on and this just isn't our, just me thinking this or you thinking that. It's, it's something that's happening a little bit more pervasively than maybe we think about in our own little, in our blinders. So, but, people, but, people, a, but yeah. Alan, to, to answer that specific question, my understanding is we can, any of us can invite people to join the group, but one of the administrators has to actually accept the people. Yeah, they who have to, basically there's a question that says, what's your tie to co-housing and, and uh, what do you think about this topic? And so there's just a kind of a filter question, so we don't get trolls. So at least try to right, but there, there, there is that. There is that. Just to clarify, there is that step. So we all can invite, and then the people then reach out and ask to join, and then they get that question, and then they get accepted. Right. Thank you. So does that mean if they're not part of a co-housing, they're not able to be accepted? No. Okay. I, think, I think the idea is, is that we're looking for, we're trying to create allyships here. And uh, in addition to our personal change stuff. And so also to respond to someone talking about, uh, you know, no brown faces in the, in the group. My way of thinking, you know, that's an asset. Because, you know, I don't know about Paula, but I get tired of telling my story. And I get tired of people saying, oh, you poor thing, or I'm sorry that happened to you. And then, you know, everyone goes along their way. I think the idea is, is for groups that have 90% uh, of dominant culture, that's, those, those are the people who need to change their minds. And I don't need, you know, it's not my problem, right? It's not Paula's problem. And so I can do what I can to support and give you some ideas and be a cultural broker. That's what I'm best at. You know, if you're looking to meet up with some uh, Native American people or some Asian people or some Latino people, I'm really good at being a cultural broker because like when, when, so when you all go and try to ask for, oh, we're looking to diversify our community or, oh, we're trying to diversify our board, you know, that kind of has that tokenism thing. And that's just one of those mm -hmm. tape things in our heads that we have to unwind. And so now I think the cultural brokerage is, is, a, is a good way to, you know, try to increase the, or, de or sort of diversify the complexion of any organization. Just another uh, factor. Great, thank you. You have a whole um, series of fan club members who um, just joined the um, the Allen Personal Fan Club. 
Thank you for <laughs> thank you for speaking your truth. Um, okay, um, we have two minutes to go. Um, I'm seeing uh, some um, activity in the chat, which is great. Um, I think uh, I haven't looked at my agenda recently. Are we doing it? Uh, we're doing it. Oh, we've got a, a, a shortened closing for Dara. You get you get a whole minute, and then um, afterwards, facilitators, if you can stay on, let's just have a quick debrief. Um, and Dara, will you will you check us out? Yes. yes. So, first of all, just thank you all for coming. Let's take a moment to thank what brought you mm. today and what, what, what brought us together to give our big part of our Saturday morning to be here together. What's driving that? What's calling us? And again, taking a moment to just be with your own body. How am I feeling now? after we've begun this conversation. How does it feel in my body? How's my heart? How's my emotional body? What's alive? What's the weather like? What are my thoughts? There may be some new creative ideas that are been touched and stirred. Just taking a moment with that. And then again, take a moment to look and see who's here. And look out at our group and notice who we've just spent, who I have just spent time with. And how does that feel? What do you notice as you look? Yeah. And to say there will be a next time, so stay tuned for how and what that looks like. And also stay open to who you might want to invite next time. You might be surprised at what happens in the conversation in the grocery store. Who knows? Thank you all. Okay. Thank you, Dara. And thanks to everybody. I, as Dara asked us to uh, look out through the crowd, I, I saw that I, there were folks who raised their hands that I didn't get to in the conversation part. So um, I apologize for that and know that your, your input is um, desired. So if you want to reach out by chat or um, send, a, send a message over Facebook, like there's, there's ways for us to stay connected here.